My name is Doridana Language Wyatt, and I'm the CEO of Step Charity Worldwide. And I'm very pleased to have here with me Claire and Louise. Thank you very much, Claire and Louise. And I leave the show to the both of you. Thank you. Hi, so I'm Claire Sproson. I'm an extended scope practitioner in uh, Oswald Street, the Robert Jones and Agnes Hunt Hospital. Um, and we've been asked to do a talk on the public harness treatment um, for DDH. Um, so going on to the next slide. Um, what is a public harness? So this is a soft harness, uh, it's made out of fabric that gently positions your baby's hips in a position that we can uh, improve the depth of their hip socket um, and to make that hip more stable should it be an unstable hip. It consists of two little booties that go on their feet, a chest strap um, and then velcro straps that go over their shoulders which can be adjusted to your baby and your health um, care professional will be doing that for you. That could be a number of different people. In our department, we have uh, myself as a physio, we have Louise as a nurse, and we have other nurses, and also healthcare assistants. One of our most experienced um, members of staff is a healthcare assistant, um, and we all apply this harness. So there could be a number of professions that would apply this to your baby. Going on to the next slide, there's a picture of a baby in the harness. So I have also got a builder bear teddy in one as well. So you can see that there's the adjustable shoulder straps, which um, will be height adjusted for your child, so sitting nicely on the chest. There's an adjustable chest strap. Now generally this will be not marked off and you can adjust it to be wider or slimmer depending on if they've eaten. So a bit like when you've had your roast dinner, you need a little bit more space. So the baby as they're having milk feeds will need it snugger and then taken down um, as that, the, their tummies go down. And then booties as well. This is the bit that puts the baby's hips in the correct position. Um, and the, the practitioner will put that in that position for you. Okay, so going on to the next slide. Why has my baby been fitted with a pavlic harness? So the main reason being is there's been a problem found with their hip joints, with the ball and socket mechanism. Um, the reasons your baby may have been referred to us in the first place is because they may have had an increased risk factor. Um, so on assessment, they may have found to have an uh, unstable hip um, or it may have been a shallow hip um, and it may be dislocated. So, so going through these, um, on the first point, so you can have a shallow um, hip socket. So if you imagine the thighs in a socket, it can be quite shallow in some babies it's just not quite sitting in there very well, or it could be sitting out of the socket as well. Um, the main thing for you to know is your baby will not be in pain from the uh, hip not being in the socket. They're, they're quite comfortable, and the treatment is also very comfortable for them also. Going on to the next slide, this shows you certain forms of DDH. So you've got a normal hip where it sits in a socket. Now within that normal range, you might still have a shallow socket that the hip's sitting within which will still require treatment if it's considered to be shallow. Then you've also got a hip that's not quite an, in the second middle image where the, it's starting to come out of the joint, so it's not quite as stable. And then on the last image on the right, where it's completely dislocated, which means it's not sitting in the socket at all. Um, all of these conditions respond nicely to a public harness and that would be the starting point within our trust of treating your baby. So going on to the next slide, how does a public harness work? So it basically puts your baby in an abducted, so that's this action of taking the leg out to the side and flex. So the hips being pushed into the socket, therefore, um, like a frog would be, it's deepening into the socket um, and hopefully making that um, a, a nice socket for it to sit in. And it's the body's weight and movement that's helping deepen that acetabulum or the socket. And also by putting in that position, all the little ligaments are starting to be shortened so that they can tighten and stabilise that hip into an improved position and shape. Okay, on to the next slide. Okay, so how long will my baby have to wear the public harness for? This is a question a lot of parents are very keen to know the answer for, and it's a very difficult one for us to predict. Um, it, we will um, have be giving them regular checks whilst they're in the harness and that's by an um, ultrasound which they were originally used to diagnose them um, 
And then once the hip becomes that normal depth, then the public harness can be removed. In some hospitals, you might find it's a slower removal process. Here, we, we end it immediately. And the time it takes for that hip to be normal varies from baby to baby. So we can't always give you a definitive answer on that. Um, in, within our trust, if your baby is starting to roll, we do actually stop using a pavlic harness and we put a harder harness, which stops the hips coming together. Um, this isn't the case in all trusts. Some trusts will use it, um, pavlics on babies who do roll. Um, so that's important for you to know. I'm going to hand over to Louise now, who's our sister on the unit, who will talk about um, how you know if it's working. Thank you. Next slide, please. Okay, so how we know if the public harness is working? As Claire mentioned before, we do regular ultrasound scans. So on the ultrasound scan, we can see if the hip is sitting in the socket to start with, if it's nice and stable, and we can also measure an angle, which we call the alpha angle, which is part of the graph method. So for a normal hip, when we take the public harness off, that alpha angle needs to be 60 degrees or above. If you can move on. So can the harness be removed during the treatment time? Some centres might say that you can remove the harness for a short time just for bathing. We here tend to say that the harness has to be worn 24 hours a day for seven days a week. And that is the case most of the time. Um, if they do say you can move from cleaning, do so, but don't do that unless your practitioner has told you to do so. Um, and like Claire mentioned before, some places, we take the harness off immediately when you reach that 60 degree angle. In some centres, they'll wean you off gradually over a bit of time. Okay. Let's go to the next. Okay, is there any equipment I should avoid using? We get this question quite a lot. There is some equipment that you should avoid using, but basically anything that is gonna bring the baby's hips together, we should avoid. If the hips are nice and open in a frog position, um, that's generally okay. Um, some centres aren't keen on you using baby carriers, but we definitely say the ones that swaddle your baby aren't good for hips. Anything that swaddles a baby and brings their hips together is not good for using, especially when you're in a public harness. Um, another thing to avoid is tight fitting clothes. So uh, there are lots of clothes that, that if you can see this, where the hips are quite wide apart with them on. But the thing you want to avoid is anything like tights or leggings. So obviously they're nice and loose when they're actually on, but you would have to pull the hips in together to be able to get the tights on. So that's not a good plan. But what we do say is you should always use your child car seat. So even if it's pushing the hips together, put them in, as long as they're not in it for a long term, it is a safety device. So you should definitely carry on using that. Okay, moving on. When should you contact the treatment centre? So there's several reasons why you want to contact the treatment centre. Mainly, if you want a bit of advice, you're not sure what you're doing. Um, if you notice your baby's not moving or kicking one or both of their legs normally, so sometimes they can get a little bit of a um, nerve palsy where the um, one of the legs or both the legs aren't kicking as normally as they would. So a good time is when you're taking the leg out of the harness to wash the skin and check the skin on, in the creases. Just if they notice the leg isn't kicking normally, contact your centre. Um, if the skin's getting red under the harness or a bit sore, again, contact your treatment centre. We sometimes would ask for a photo to be sent to us so we can have a look at it before we bring them. But very often we would want to, if there's any problems with the skin, we would want to actually physically see it because it's very difficult to tell from a photo what's going on. Um, if you think that your child's had a big growth spurt, so if the harness doesn't look in the same position as it was, sorry, can you just go back a little bit? Yeah, if you think child's had a growth spurt, uh, grown significantly, and that you think the harness might get a bit smaller or just need adjusting, if suddenly their hips are further up than they were before, then contact your centre and see if it needs adjusting. And we will say some babies are generally unsettled for 24, 48 hours when they first go into the harness. That's normal, just persevere and it should pass. Okay. We can move on. 
So change the baby's nappy while they're in the harness. Sometimes you might actually find, once you start, it's easier to change the baby's nappy while they're in the harness. For one thing, they're held in that position. It's more difficult for them to put their feet inside the nappy when you're trying to change it. So you should be shown when the harness is fitted, whoever fits it, the practitioner that fits it, will show you how to change the baby's nappy and all the do's and don'ts. One of the main things is just to make sure that you don't put the nappy on the outside of the leg straps, that you just took it inside. Otherwise, it just makes life more difficult for you. Doesn't matter what nappies you use. You can use cloth nappies. You can use disposable nappies. They're all suitable. You don't have to change what nappies you normally use and carry on with the same size nappies, they don't need adjusting. We do have some parents that say about it, check, uh, affecting the ability to have their bowels open. Some think, people think the babies are more constipated. Some people think it helps the babies to go to the toilet. So if you're having problems with constipation or anything like that, have a word with your health visitor. They are the experts on that. They're the best people to speak to. Okay. Can move on. Okay, care for your baby's skin in the harness. Again, we always show people how to check the skin and how to care for the baby's skin when we fit the harness. It's important that you do check the baby's skin regularly, especially because they're in a flex position in the creases, in the groin crease behind the knees. It's really important that you check there that the skin isn't getting sore. Sometimes babies get quite sweaty in the creases, so just making sure that they're cleaned regularly. Um, we always say to take the feet out, the little booties daily, and just check all the skin's okay and wash the legs, but make sure you really dry well in the creases because it's when you get the moisture that they start to get sore. Another place is their armpits and across the neck where the straps are, it's worth checking there as well. If the skin's a bit sore, just normal um, baby creams that you would normally use, and some babies tend to um, have eczema, so whatever cream you've been given by your health visitor or advised by your health visitor to use for the eczema, just carry on using the same creams. That shouldn't be affected. And like we said before, when you're taking the legs out to wash them, just check that that's a good time to check they are active and they're able to move them still well. The harnesses do generally get a bit grubby. That is normal. We're not worried about that. So if the baby has a rather large bowel movement or an explosive poop, just wash the baby down with the harness on. Don't take the harness off and just give it a sponge down while it's still on. Obviously, you don't want to get it too wet, but just wipe it the best you can. We understand that these things happen, so we're not worried that the harness is a bit dirty when it comes back. Okay. If you're breastfeeding the baby, there's no reason that you should stop breastfeeding the baby. You can carry on as normal. It doesn't affect the baby's ability to latch on and feed. You might need to think about positioning. I mean, you don't really want to swaddle the baby close, so holding it in tight and feeding, you want to avoid. But you can still carry on using other positions. Some people find it useful sitting the baby on their lap with their legs straddling so they can feed, so they're keeping in that nice frog position that we really want. Another method is putting the baby around the side so their legs are under your arm, so they're not squashed against your lap. But when you're breastfeeding, you'll find your own methods. You'll find it much easier to sort what, what works for you. And if you're still struggling, then you can always use an electric league. They're very good advice for that. Now I think I'm moving back to Claire now. Yeah, so on to the next slide. So sleeping, we, we know sleeping is an issue with all these babies. So if the little sleep your baby allows you, the harness generally shouldn't impact on this. We did mention the first 24 to 48 hours, they can have problems just settling into it. But both most parents say after that, they do tend to settle. Um, they don't need to change where they're sleeping. Um, occasionally, if your um, bassinet or your Moses basket um, is particularly narrow, you might find that it's not wide enough to accommodate the public harness. And in that case, you may have to look at um, going into their cot or getting a wider Moses basket. But in most cases, it, it isn't affected. Um, so that the main problem with there is that you just need to check that they have the space and that it's not bringing uh, their hips together and their knees up uh, and there's enough, enough width around them. Um, 
usually most of these babies won't be in sleeping bags at that stage. They're usually not advised for children under a certain age, and most of these babies are under that age, so um, sleeping bags shouldn't be considered anyway in this age group. Going on to the next slide. This is what clothes can my baby wear in their harness? Um, so the, the first thing is about the vest. Um, you'll find that different units have different advice when it comes to the vests underneath the harness. Here at Oswestry, we, we do like to encourage to wear a harness, especially if the baby has eczema, because it just protects the, the harness from rubbing them. Um, we teach the parents how to take the vest off from, un, uh, from underneath the harness uh, and then put it back on. But there are some places that will ask you not to wear one and you just need to talk to your team. Um, what you need to check, I think we've mentioned this earlier, just making sure it's not tight. So again, everything we're doing with your baby is trying to get to the hips nice to the sides and if you get anything tight fitting it could bring the hips together and we don't want this um, so just look that it's not bringing it in together um, we have had some companies making um, some nice clothes so uh, the, the outfit on the, the slide is from Marks and Spencers and they do lovely little um, little trousers they also do um, vests which are sort of high legs so they don't sit on the straps at all and those are worth considering uh, buying um, Otherwise, you find probably going up to the next size, so it's just baggier and it gives them more room. And in the summer, obviously, if it's when it's hot, they can just have the harness on um, and nothing over top. A lot of these are girls, so just wearing a big fancy dress over top covers everything. So you don't really need to worry too much about the clothes. But again, talk to your practitioner and also go on steps and talk to other um, parents on the site about what they used. So going on to the next slide, um, should I adjust my baby's harness? So you will be, the, the shoulder and leg are, are going to be set by your practitioner to where we want it to be for the treatment of that hip. So you shouldn't really be um, changing that at all. Here at Oswestry, what we tend to do is we mark off the straps with a pen line. So when you are checking their skin and you're undoing it, uh, the harness you can clean and then make sure that you're going back to the same point that you were before and we do the same with the leg straps the only one that we don't uh, mark off again is, is the chest strap because obviously the baby's feeding their tummy is growing and then it's going back down again and we want to make sure that they're comfortable and we like to be able to slide off fingers four fingers under comfortably under that strap to make sure that it's not tight um, again as we've said before babies grow quite rapidly they can have a week where they don't grow and then a week then they grow quite rapidly and if you feel that it's not fitting them whether they've got wider or longer please let your team know so that they can review your baby in the harness and go up to the next size um, should they need it okay on to the next slide so what happens if the hips do not correct in the harness? So on some occasions, unfortunately, this happens that the baby doesn't respond. These are usually the hips that are dislocated. So we find the majority of shallow hips and sublux hips do respond very beautifully and eventually you'll end up with a normal hip. Um, and again, we don't know what that time scale will be, but we get a few dislocated hips that just don't respond for whatever reason to the public harness. In that case, if we've seen that it's not responding, we'll remove the public harness and we'll refer to your paediatric orthopedic surgeon um, and surgical options will be discussed going forward. Okay. So I think it's over to questions. I think we are actually. And um, thank you very much, Louise and Claire, for this very in insightful uh, presentation. And I'm certain that there are many questions that um, um, our viewers would like to um, ask us. Um, let's start with the ones that we have received so far. Um, the first one is uh, related to um, the checks of the harness. So my baby has not had the harness checked for two months and she has grown a lot. Should it be altered in the hospital or can I do it at home? She needs a bigger harness. So we, we would advise that, that they contact their treatment team um, and get the baby reviewed. Um, we wouldn't advise that the parent changes it themselves. So contact your local treatment team. Thank you. Um, the next question, um, if the baby's feet slip out of the boot, does, it, does this mean it needs to be tightened? Not necessarily needs tightening, but I think they should probably get in touch with their centre and get them to review it. It might need adjusting or it might just it might just be that the harness needs looking at. Sometimes we find 
some of the booties have a little split in the booty. So some babies just seem to be like Houdini managed to slip out of it. So just in case of getting in touch with the local centre and getting them to have a look at it for them. Thank you. And um, is, this is related to exercise. If there's anything a parent can do to help the baby while they're in the harness, for example, any leg exercises? We, we generally wouldn't say there's any exercises they need to do. Um, what we would say is mainly avoiding that the hips are coming together and the knees are coming together. So everything we're trying to create is that frogged um, appearance of the child. Um, so exercises, no, but, but you should check that the baby can kick the legs when you're cleaning and then just making sure that you're not bringing the hips together. And with regards to double nappy, can that help a child with DDH? I mean, do they have to go always in, in the public harness or double nappies is also a solution? So do you want to answer it, Louise? Uh, I was just going to say, here we go with public harnesses. That is the method we use here. I've not used double nappies. You definitely wouldn't need double nappies alongside the public harness because the public harness negates the use of it. But it'll be, it's going on the advice of your local centre. Obviously, everything your local centre does would be researched. So we tend to use public harnesses here. We don't do double nappies, but your local centre may well do that. And uh, with regards to contacting the um, treating team has been quite difficult during uh, COVID. Um, and there are some hospitals that unfortunately are not uh, seeing the children or, their, or the babies, so they're postponing the appointments. Um, and the question here is if, if a child, if a baby wears uh, the public harness for an extra month, can this do any harm to the, uh, to, to the child? So that harness, they need to speak to their team about how, if they can support them in any way, looking at the um, harness. There are, there are harmful side effects from an ill-fitting public harness. So they can um, have something called a vascular necrosis, um, which is when the head of the thigh bone can lose its blood supply. And that can happen from ill-fitting harnesses. It's a very rare complication, but it can happen. And also, as Louise mentioned earlier, they can get femoral nerve palsy. Um, this tends to be um, our slightly chubby older babies that tend to get these, but they are quite rare again. Um, so it, it does need to be checked. So just reach out to your team and express your worries and, and let them know how long it is since they've last been checked. Thank you. And uh, we have a question related to um, an older baby. Um, when they start to roll around, is, is, is tummy playtime okay? Yeah, so tummy playtime is absolutely fine. Don't stop them doing the tummy playtime. What we tend to do here, like Claire mentioned earlier in the presentation, is when they start to roll, we tend to change them into a stiffer harness that just goes around the hips. It just keeps those legs apart better while they're doing their rolling around. But that would, again, speak to your local centre about what they advise for that. And um, with regards, I know you talked about uh, red marks uh, on the skin and when to go back. And uh, But this question relates to the vest, whether to put it um, on top of the public car or underneath. And, and, and the question is whether a vest under the harness would prevent um, skin irritation. I'll let you yeah, go. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's good. It would possibly prevent skin irritation. I like, I personally like the vest under the harness because I feel like it does give that layer between the harness and the skin. It depends how the child's skin's reacting. And like Claire mentioned earlier, in the summer, you might find they're too warm with the harness and a vest underneath it. So you might want to just leave them in a nappy and a harness. So it's a case of checking your baby's skin. And if it is looking a bit sore, then there's no reason why you can't put the vest underneath. Thank you, Louise. And uh, we have a question related to baby sling. Um, if a child that is in a harness uh, is basically allowed to go in a baby sling, and if there are uh, baby sling there are actually ideal for children with uh, DDH. So again this this will be sort of different answer from department to department so here we tend to not advise it and um, there's 
you know, we, we, we haven't got enough evidence because there's so much variation out there in harnesses and some may nicely separate the hips, but some might not. Um, so by not knowing the harness, we just don't want to risk the baby to be in that harness for longer or having an effective treatment. So here we, we tend to just say, please don't until the treatment's finished. And then once the treatment's finished, they can go in it as normal if, if that's fine. But again, I would just contact your local treatment team to see what your consultant's preference is. Thank you, Claire. And we have a question that um, has come in through the Q&A section and uh, where we have a child that uh, sits with the legs very wide and, and straight and the knees often turn in and, and feel that the public harness therefore is not working because of um, how the baby is reacting to it. Would this be a sign that she should go back and discuss with the treating team? Yeah, if, if mum's not happy and it doesn't seem right, go with that gut feeling as a mum and contact the team. Um, here, here we would ask for photos. We, we do have an email address that parents can send pictures to. Um, but in that case, it might just be talking to the team about what she's finding. And um, the last question that has come in is uh, the effectiveness of the public hand. Is it, uh, is it effective at what age immediately? after the diagnosis, for a few weeks of life or later on? And obviously, the earlier we catch it, the more chance of it working quickly, but it, it varies. So it depends how shallow the hips are, what the diagnosis is at the start. And it, basically we're using mother nature. So we're using the body's remodeling. So the younger they are, the more remodeling potential they've got. So yes, early you catch them, but even the ones that we don't get to a little bit later, it can be quite effective with. It just depends on each case, individual case. Thank you. And I guess I did say that it was the last question, but then another came in, so, <laughs> which, is quite, which I think is quite relevant. And um, it's probably, it, it fits in with then, where do you go if it's successful? So the question is, if, if the treatment is successful, um, what next? Do you need to have regular checkup? Do you have to be more cautious of certain exercise that uh, uh, you might allow your child to do? So here, uh, once the pavlik is removed, um, this is when we've seen that we've got this magic 60 degrees alpha angle because we use the graph system here. Uh, we remove it straight away and then we, we, we tell the parents really to treat the baby normally. Um, we're not keen obviously on door bouncers normally anyway, so we potentially would, would say don't do those. But we follow up our children that have had a public harness until the age of five. Uh, so usually we get them three months later. Um, but unfortunately, then they're going to be too old and um, to have a, a repeat ultrasound scan. So at this point, they have an x-ray instead. Um, but we do follow up our babies for quite a long time. And in terms of how they sit, uh, what should they avoid? Uh, is there so, anything in the famous uh, so a, position? <laughs> People do talk about W sitting, which is when the child sits with their knees together and the feet out to the side. Um, 20 years ago, I was very much of the camp as a physio saying, do not let your child do this. Um, but we now know that actually with research and evidence, it doesn't seem to affect uh, the hips. So we tend to let them sit where, you know, how is comfortable for that child. Um, so there is no right or wrong really. We know these children tend to be a little bit more flexible than most, so these are your little gymnasts for the future. Um, but let them, you know, do what they normally want to do as a child. And that's the whole point of the treatment is we want to give you a child that's normal at the end of it. Thank you, Claire. And thank you, Louise. And um, uh, for those of you that I know that you have many more questions, please do send them to info at steps um, .uk. Um and we're going to get Claire and Louise to answer those questions. If you would like to be put in touch with a family that has been through uh, public harness treatment or is going through the public harness treatment, please do contact us. We can do that. And uh, Louise, Claire, much appreciated. Thank you very much for your time, especially during COVID. We appreciate everything you're doing for us and for our children. Thank you. And thank you to all of you that have been with us tonight. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.